Okay, next we need to name our unsaturations. So if we look, a structure can be saturated, <clears throat> which would have no multiple bonds in the parent chain, or it could be unsaturated, would have a double and or triple bonds in the parent chain. Saturated chains are indicated by adding the, the word or the, the little uh, suffix, I guess you would call it, the suffix A-N-E after the parent chain name. Now, because A-N-E starts with a vowel, we would drop the A from the parent chain name. So for example, buta would become bute, and then we would add ain. So we would get the word butane. If we have a double bond, what we do is we add the, the suffix ene, but we have to put a number separated by dashes in front of that to indicate which carbon the double bond starts on. Again, we drop the A from the parent chain name. The number that we want to use is the lowest number carbon of the double bond that, to which we're referring. So let's look at an example here. So what I have here is I have a chain of five carbons with a double bond in the middle. I would number those one, two, three, four, five to put the double bond carbons at two or three instead of numbering it from that end, which would put it at three and four. If we look at the two numbers where the double bond is, we have a double bond from two to three. Two is the lower number, so therefore that would be the lowest numbered carbon of the double bond. We would put the two into its double bond name. Now when we look at our parent, our parent has five carbons, so it would have the name penta, but because en starts with a vowel, we would drop the a. So we would have pent, then we would put dash two, then dash, and then the ending ene. It is important to note that we pretty much put a dash anytime we change between letters and numbers on either side. So that's why we have a dash here and we have a dash there. Now, there is one problem with it. As I mentioned, the IUPAC does update the naming rule. They update them as they discover things that are complicated, complications or problems or things like that. In the old IUPAC, prior to 1993, the number for the most important functional group in a molecule, including unsaturations if that was the only or the most important thing present, that number would go in front of the parent. So this number two would instead of being in the middle, right next to the suffix for the functional group it's returning to, it would go in front. So that would look like this, 2-pentene. I call that the old IUPAC. The problem, when you change the, the rules after over 100 years, is that any book, any article, any poster, Anything that was prepared prior to the rule change, plus for a little while afterwards, because it took a while for the rule change to sort of get reported out to the chemistry community, all of those materials will have the old IUPAC name in them instead of the new IUPAC name. And so really by changing this rule, what they've done is created just an extra thing for us to have to know and memorize. But that is how it is. We are in the process of trying to change to this new numbering system. And in fact, the new numbering system really works better. It's less ambiguous. But again, we have a whole bunch of books that still have the old names in them. A triple bond is named similarly to a double bond. It's just that we use a different suffix. We use the suffix ein, Y-N-E. Again, we have to put a number separated by dashes. The final A is dropped because Y is treated as a vowel. And the number indicates the lowest numbered carbon. So going through again, we have five carbons, so it's penta. We're going to drop that. There's pent. 
We have our triple bond on carbons two to three. We preferred that numbering system because it would put them at lower numbers. Between two and three, two is the lower number. So that's the number we're gonna use. And then our ending is ein. If we looked at the old IUPAC, that number two would be in front. So it would be two pentine, but the new IUPAC prefers pent two ein. Now, when we have more than one unsaturation in a molecule, more than one of the same unsaturation, I should say, what we're going to do is we're going to sort of group up the names. So what we do in that case, we group up the numbers, and then in front of the name, we put a prefix. Di for two, tri for three, tetra for four. Now, because di, tri, and tetra begin with consonants, we don't drop the A at the end of the parent name. Here would be an example. Again, I've already numbered it correctly so that these two double bonds are at the lowest numbers possible. We can see that the first double bond starts on carbon one, the second double bond starts on carbon three, and we have a total of five carbons. Okay, so, what we're going to have in this is a 1-ene and a 3-ene. So we are going to uh, collect those together and we're call, going to call that a 1, 3 dash diene, two enes basically. Now because di starts with a consonant, we're going to leave our parent name with the A. So this would be penta 1-3 diene. And again, in the old IUPAC, because these are the only functional group, that 1 and 3 would have been moved out to the front, and this would have been called 1,3-pentadiene. Finally, we need to be able to name the main functional group. To name the main functional group, we add an ending. We add a suffix to the end of the name after the unsaturations. Here's a list of the common functional groups from first semester, the name of the functional group, and then the suffix that we use in nomenclature. Again, this is arranged from highest to lowest priority. It's in the same order as the table presented previously. And you can see that carboxylic acid are named oic acid. Okay, aldehydes are named, have a suffix al. Ketones have a number plus own, and alcohols have a number plus all. And if you look at these, these basically relate to either, see, aldehyde, al, or ketone, or alcohol. Now, you'll notice that the first two suffixes do not have numbers. They don't need numbers because they are always going to be carbon one, since they have a priority for naming and they have a priority for numbering. In contrast, ketones and alcohols can be um, in several different locations along a carbon chain. We want to put them, they would have a priority to put them at the lowest number possible, but that might not necessarily be one if they're not right on the end of the chain. So we need to indicate the number where they are located. Now, this is going to, these suffixes are going to go after the unsaturation names. The unsaturation names themselves end in E. What we do is similar to with the parent names. If the ending for the main functional group starts with a vowel, then we drop the E from the unsaturation. So let's take a look at some examples. So for example, this is a carboxylic acid. It has one, two, three carbons in the parent chain. Carbon one would be the carboxylic acid carbon because that has the highest priority. It's the main functional group. So the parent would be prop, but we wouldn't use propa because our unsaturation is going to be alkane, ain. 
So we would drop the A after the parent, we would put our unsaturation in. Then we would add the ending oic acid. But because oic acid end, or starts with a vowel, we would drop the E at the end of the unsaturation. So this is what we get. Probe, A is dropped, ain, E is dropped, oic, space, acid, propanoic acid. If we do something similar for the aldehyde, this is a four carbon aldehyde. The aldehyde carbon would be number one because that's a priority for numbering. Again, our parent would be buta, but we would drop the A. We would have ane, because, and we would drop the E, and then we have al, which starts with the vowel. So butanal. Okay, if we look at this molecule, this molecule is a little more complex because we have an alcohol main functional group and we have an unsaturation. In that case, we have two possible numbering schemes. We're going to choose the numbering scheme that puts the main functional group, which is the alcohol, at the lowest number. So if we look at the red numbering scheme, that would be alcohol at carbon 2. If we look at the green number screen scheme, that would be alcohol at carbon 4 we're going to choose carbon 2. So we're going to use the red numbering scheme. That's going to put the double bond at 3 and 4, so we're going to use the number 3 for the double bond. Okay, so 5 carbons total, so penta, but we drop the A. Then our unsaturation is ene at carbon 3, so pent-3-ene we drop the E, dash 2, because that's where the alcohol is, dash O, the ending for alcohol. So pent-3-ene-2-O. Finally then, here's an example for a ketone. Again, we have to look for the correct numbering scheme. In this case, we want the ketone at 3 instead of 4. We have a total of 6. So it's hexa, we drop the A. Ane, we drop the E dash 3 dash own hexane 3 own again in the old IU pack this number would have been in front of the parent so this would have been called 3 hexanone when there is more than one of the most important functional group in a molecule again we group the endings together and we use the prefixes di, tri, tetra. So an example of this would be this molecule, which has two alcohols in it. It's a three carbon molecule, so we would use prop. It has no unsaturations, so we use ane. But when we look at the suffix for the functional groups, because we're putting in di all for two alcohols, that's going to start with a consonant, so we're going to keep this E right here. And then of course we have to put the numbers for each carbon where the alcohol is, has an alcohol attached, so that would be carbon 1 and 2, so we get propane, don't drop the E, dash 1, 2, dash di all, two alcohols.